What's going on everybody? Chrome on Rust here. We're here to talk about the Whirlwind Rend Barbarian build, one that is going to be able to clear above greater if level 70. Now it's going to be very dependent on the gear that you have and how high your paragons and everything are and how high you're going to be able to take it, how willing you are to fish for an amazing greater rift. But I would say if you're above paragon 800, you know, you should probably have a pretty good amount of gear at that point should have a decent uh well you have 800 paragons but i'd say you should be able to clear around greater if level 70 with around 800 paragon you want to start going higher than that you may start needing better gear start fine tuning things you may need more strength to boost you know your damage even further your survivability even further but you know just kind of jumping right into things here talking about the gear first now the thing that is going to be making this build work is going to be your Mortal Kings set. Now the two piece is going to make your Ancients last until they die. The four piece is going to reduce the cooldown of Wrath of and call the Ancients by three seconds for every 10 Fury that you spend with an attack. That's going to mean that you're going to be able to keep your Wrath of Berserker and your call the Ancients up 100% of the time. For the most part, if you're fighting single target Rift Guardians, there can and will be situations where your Wrath of Berserker will not be active. And this is something definitely to note that sometimes your Wrath of Berserker may be dropping. And that's going to be very important. We are going to get into that a little bit later. Well, one of the things that is going to make that very important is the six-piece set, which is while both Wrath of Berserker and Call of the Ancients are active, you're going to deal 250% increased damage. So that's one reason why you do not want your Wrath of Berserker or your Call of the Ancients to ever not be active because you're going to be losing a tremendous amount of damage. Now the other set that, you're, that you are going to be wanting to use with this is going to be two pieces of Waste Set that is going to increase the damage per second of Rend by 500% and its duration to 15 seconds. Now the two pieces that you choose to use are going to be pretty much up to you. The shoulders though are going to be mandatory and then the other piece of waist set that you use it's not going to really matter if you have a really sweet waist helmet use waist helmet i'm using a waist chest just because i have a pretty good one here and so that is the slot that i chose to use my two pieces of waist in and then of course you're going to be wanting to use your immortal king's boulder breaker that is going to be your weapon of choice and the only one that you're going to be able to use for a build like this mortal king's belt Definitely preferring life percent over life per fury spent. It's just not really worth it in my opinion. Life percent is going to be better for you. Now, where you choose to get your vitality and where you choose to get your damage is kind of optional, I would say. You know, the more survivability that you drop, the squishier you're going to be, but the more damage that you're going to be able to deal. That's just really the trade-off. Having vitality on gloves is really nice. But you know what? If you want more damage, having 20% area damage on gloves is also very nice. The trade-off is really going to be up to you. Now, you're going to want vitality on your weapon, and you're going to want vitality on your helmet. With that said, I do feel that you can drop the vitality on your gloves, but, you know, that's just making it that much more squishy, so be aware of that. Now, for the bracers. I like to use the APDs, Ancient Parthen Defenders. Each stunned enemy within 25 yards is going to reduce the damage that you take by 12%. Now this also applies to frozen monsters. Now this build does not actually freeze or stun monsters in any way without the use of gear. Having gear assist you is how you're going to be able to do that. And we're going to be using the belt which is going to give you up to like 5.1% freeze chance. And then the gloves which is going to be able to get up to around like 5.1% stun chance and with those two or even just one honestly the ancient parthen defenders are going to be helping you out now it's not a huge percentage but we're going to be fighting you know hordes and hordes of monsters that low percent is going to be procking sometimes when you're in those really large groups having it on both items obviously is going to be the preferred way to go for the amulet amara's is very good Sorry about that. I think a ball just hit my window. Freaked me out a little bit. Okay, Amaris is going to be very good for the amulet slot or the Hellfire amulet. One of those two would be the preferred, I would say. You know, there's other good amulet choices out there. You know, you can get yourself an Eye of Etlich, which is going to reduce 
the ranged damage that you take by up to around 30%. That is very good. Just having yourself a nice solid amulet is what you're going to be looking for. This is a physical based build, so having physical skills, crit chance, crit hit damage on there is going to be great. Having Amaras where you don't get trolled with a poison resistance secondary would be ideal, but you know, you just gotta, gotta work with what you have. And then for the rings, crit chance, crit damage, area damage. We're using focus and restraint set, crit chance, crit damage. And I have strength on this one, unfortunately, that is not area damage, but you know, we're looking for another really good ring. Haven't come across one yet, so that's just kind of what it is. Uh, regeneration or armor on your boots. The more that I play the build, I feel like armor is probably going to be the way to go. Uh, this pair of boots just happen to have like 540 or something like that, 550 strength on there. And I decided to roll the extra 100 strength on there, keep the regen. You know, I was getting some armor boost through the strength. So I think armor, though, probably is going to be the way to go on the boots. But regen is also going to be very good. Now, what do we have in the cube? We have the furnace in the cube, of course. The lamination, which red can now stack up to two times on enemies. And then the jewelry, we're going to be using unity. Because, of course, on our follower, we have a unity as well. And then we are using the token, which if you equip this on your follower and you yourself are using a unity and your follower is using a unity, then you're going to be reducing the damage that you take by 50%. Now, in addition to the freeze and everything that I have on my gear, I have chosen to go with an Azeroth. Now, another really good option would be the Thunder Fury Blessed Blade of the Windseeker. Now I chose to go with this weapon because I feel that I care more about single target freeze and stun, whereas a Thunder Fury would be better against multi-targets. Now why I say that is because as long as your Thunder Fury Blessed Blade of the Windseeker has lightning damage on it, and then you use the ring here, the Widward, which is going to lightning damage has a 33% chance to stun for 1.5 seconds. This is going to be procking your ancient Parthen defenders. Mobs around you that are stunned or frozen are going to reduce the damage that you take by like 9 to 12%. It doesn't have to be a mob that you froze. It just has to be a frozen or a stunned mob. So your follower is going to be able to assist you as well in procking your ancient Parthen defenders. Then for the shield here i would use the freeze of deflection blocking an attack has a chance to freeze the attacker for 1.4 seconds and then the amulet i like to use the s of johan just a chance to pull enemies towards the target when your templar hits a mob or something like that is just pretty nice it gives you a little bit of assisting in the grouping so either thunder fury or azrath i really don't know which one's better this is just kind of something that I've been messing around with. You can see that on your Azrath, though, I had to put lightning damage on here or else if I didn't put lightning damage because these are always going to come with cold damage on there. So to make your Azrath work with the Woodward, you need to put lightning damage on there. And then the reason that I use this particular weapon is because it does have the chance to freeze and that chance to freeze goes up to 25%. So you have like three ways to project your ancient Parthen defenders, or four ways, however you want to look at it, but your follower being one way, and then your belt being another way, and then the gloves being the last. And between those three, the mitigation is definitely going to be noticeable compared to when you do not use these. Now the other option would then be using a pair of strong arm bracers. Your furious charge, we're going to be getting into the skills is going to give you a 30% additive damage increase or up to 30% from 20 to 30 when you furious charge a monster. So that would be the other pair of bracers and then you wouldn't have to worry about getting, you know, the stun on your follower and the freeze on your follower and your gear and all that good stuff. So that is the gear. We could talk briefly about the gems. Uh, we're going to be using Bane of the Stricken. Also going to be using Taeguk, and we're also going to be using the Pain Enhancer. Now the reason that we use these three gems I will be talking about a little bit later, but just know that the Taeguk is for survivability, Bane of the Stricken is for killing the Rift Guardian, 
and the pain enhancer is actually for snapshotting higher attack speed which we'll talk about a little bit later so the skills just jump right in here moving right along furious charge with merciless assault this is going to be how you're able to generate fury with this build you have to have furious charge you also have to have weapon master without these two this build will not work furious charge and weapon master are an absolute must whirlwind with dust devils this is just for a little bit of increased damage maybe proccing bane of the stricken a little bit more just the dust dust devils are creating a little bit more damage for you as well as proccing your area damage effects that's going to be helping a ton there as well you know just a few more percent of damage towards this build we're also going to be using cancel that rend with bloodbath now this is the ruin that you want to be using and the reason for that is when you kill an enemy or enemies killed while bleeding cause all enemies within 10 yards to begin bleeding for a thousand one hundred weapon damage as physical over five seconds so we're going to be able to apply rend on a monster because of the lamination twice and because of our waste set it's going to be applied for a 15 second duration instead of just a five second duration as well as when a monster dies and the other monsters around him are already going to have two bleeding stacks on them if like two monsters die around monsters that are in those 10 yards now they're going to have four stacks basically of rend on that monster that's kind of what's making all this build work is the lamination, the waste set, using rend with bloodbath, having area damage, you know, all the good stuff. Call the ancients together as one. 50% of all damage dealt to you is instead divided evenly between the ancients. So what this means is you're dividing your damage by 50% through your follower. You're dividing your damage once again by 50% from the call of the ancients. And then we are using Wrath the Berserker with Striding Giant. Reduce all damage taken by 50%. Reducing damage taken once again by another 50%. Wrath the Berserker with Striding Giant in the higher difficulties is pretty much mandatory or your survivability is not going to be too hot. Because then, of course, the other only, or for the most part, the only other option is going to be insanity, I do believe. Maybe slaughter would be something interesting, but I don't know. Not going to get into that. Last skill here is going to be battle rage with swords of, or swords to, you know, whatever that is. Basically, crit hits are going to grant you and your pets up to 2,000 or 21,457 life. Also going to be giving you some crit and going to be increasing the damage that you deal but this is your survivability skill if you were not using battle rage with this particular ruin the only other option for you to do well there might be other options but would be to go with blood funnel which is going to crit hits are going to restore one percent of your maximum life but the thing is when you start running with a lower life pool i have seven hundred and fifty thousand life which isn't really a lower one but it's not a high life pool either so the lower that your life if we had a hundred thousand or a one million life pool, we're going to be getting ten thousand life from Blood Funnel. Where, as you can see, it doesn't matter where the life pool is, and critical hits with this rune is going to be giving us twenty-one thousand life. So we would need two million life and some change for Dust Devils to not be a good option, because then we'd have to be running with Blood Funnel. Kind of said that wrong, but you know, Blood Funnel just not the way to go. You could use this now and keep on battle rage but the thing is this is just going to be like overhealing the dust devils provide some extra damage it is pretty nice critical hits are going to be coming from your tornadoes so actually your dust devils when they hit a monster and it critically hits it has that chance to proc the battle rage which is going to in turn give you life on hit so it's not even really increasing your life on hit that much more if you were to swap over to blood funnel so just keep on the dust devils it gives you more damage and a decent amount of survivability now for the passives weapon master as i said is a must we are using a mighty weapon so anytime that you hit a monster you're going to generate two fury we're going to be using fury's charge to hit those monsters and we're going to be pathing through a ton of monsters so if you hit 30 monsters with your Fury's Charge, that is going to give you then, you know, 60 Fury from your Weapon Master. So that's how we're going to keep our Fury stacked. 
Nerves of Steel being in hardcore, I do still feel that this is mandatory. Mistakes are going to be made. There's just no way around it. So keeping on Nerves of Steel, if you're playing in hardcore, is the way that I've been preferring to play. Ruthless is the damage skill that I've been choosing to use. It buffs your damage around like 8 to 10% or something like that overall. But you basically deal 40% additional damage to enemies below 30% life. And then the fourth passive here, Superstition. This is the one that I have been running with. This is the one that I feel that keeps me alive in the higher greater rifts. If this were softcore, I would experiment a lot more with taking it off, but I can tell you when I take off Superstition and I'm playing in like greater rift level 75, that being the rift that I am trying to clear now, the damage output from elites is tremendous. And I feel like you then, if you weren't using Superstition, the possibility of dragging elites along with you on maps that aren't so great there's not a ton of density i just don't think like it's going to be doable superstition may not be the way to go it's the passive that i've been choosing to run with but in place of nerves of steel and superstition i would take superstition off and i would run rampage this is what I would run in Hardcore if I didn't want to run with Superstition. But the thing about Superstition that I did not talk about is it's going to reduce all non-physical damage that you take by 20%. So Elites are going to be dealing a lot of non-physical damage, that's why I said that. But it's also going to generate you two additional Fury when you take damage from a ranged or an elemental attack. Give a chance to generate two Fury. Which in turn is going to help you keep your Wrath of Berserker stacked even more often on those single target Rift Guardians. You soak up a little bit of damage, but that damage in turn is going to give you some Fury that's going to give you more damage output, which is also going to help you keep your Wrath of Berserker stacked. So Superstition is what I like, but Rampage and then for Nerves of Steel, I would probably take off Brawler? I'd probably put on Brawler. If not Brawler, it would be Berserker's Rage one or the other probably probably berserker's rage would be better but i'm not 100 percent certain but those basically you're just going all out damage and if you're using a hellfire then you wouldn't have the choice between brawler or berserker's rage you would just run both of them for even more damage so that is the skills we're going to jump into the paragon points here now going for strength Capping out your movement speed, which 25% is going to be the cap. If you have nothing on your gear, jam as many Paragon points into you, this as you can. Once you're at 25%, you're good. Maximum Fury is optional. You don't need that Maximum Fury. It does not provide you with more damage. It does not provide you with anything like a Hoda Barb would. It just does help zone transitions and things like that. If you're making a long trek from pack to pack, you want to make sure that you keep your Tegook stacked. You know, having the additional 50 Fury will help you in some situations, but it is in turn going to lower your damage, and it is going to be giving you slightly less armor. So it's a trade-off. If you want to make it, you can. I have enough Paragons to where the point I feel like the Maximum Fury is pretty nice. Offensive, you're going to want to go with... I would say cooldown's probably pretty mandatory. In hardcore, if you're playing it softcore, probably not as much because if you're at the Berserker drops and you lose your 50% damage mitigation buff, it's not going to be as important. So in hardcore, I'd probably say cooldown's pretty uh, pretty much a must. Then like crit chance, crit damage, and then attack speed last. Defenses, I would go with all resistance. Then probably life percent or armor, one or the other are going to be a very good choice. And then life regeneration being last, area damage, resource cost, and life on hit, all very good. Resource cost reduction, though, I'd say is probably the most important than area damage, than life on hit, and gold find is just always there. So we talked about the skills, the gear, the paragon points, the gems, all that good stuff. Now I have a few things that I uh, put down here. I jotted down because I did not want to forget. Uh, one thing is dealing with lag with this build. Now, I believe I have some gameplay in the background, or at least I should, I hope, that I can throw in there where it just shows you a tremendous amount of lag. Now, how you're going to be able to deal with this is part of the 
part of what you're going to need to do is experimentation and just kind of get a good feel for yourself but if the mob is cluttered or if the screen is cluttered with mobs you're really going to want to watch out now it's not going to be so much while the mobs are dying but it's when the mobs or it's not when the mobs are taking damage but it's actually when the mobs are dying that the lag the game is going to lag out like crazy part of the reason i feel is going to be because we are using that particular ruin bloodshed or bloodbath on a rend which is going to be in turn dealing more damage to mobs which which are within 10 yards of the monster that just died things are going to get pretty hectic the way to counteract that is you want to pause the game this is a solo build so pausing the game is definitely going to be an option and sometimes you're going to have to do it a lot and you're just going to have to kind of get a feel and you're going to have to trust the game you pause it the game kind of catches up with itself you then furious charge you throw out a couple runs you pause the game again sometimes maybe you won't even be able to do that you'll just pause the game you'll whirlwind around a little bit make sure you are holding down the whirlwind button when you unpause the game always hold down the whirlwind button when you unpause so that way you're not taking damage well you're going to be taking damage but you're going to be healing yourself then still if you stop whirlwinding you're definitely going to die so you unpause the game while you're whirlwinding and sometimes you're going to have to pause immediately again that's just going to kind of happen really you're going to have to get a feel for the lag what else do we got here knowing when to leave a rift in hardcore this is pretty mandatory in softcore it is as well because time you know we may not be pressured for time in diablo 3 with the length of the seasons and everything but you know just sitting around wasting your time on a useless rift is pretty useless so getting to know mob types getting to know maps how high you're going to be able to clear versus particular mobs the two types that i would say you're going to be wanting the most is probably going to be like zombies with grotesques just like hordes and hordes of zombies with a ton of grotesques is really good or goats unburied are probably going to be like the two best mob types for the rend barbarian uh furious charge is very very important furious charge is going to get you out of very sketchy situations where you're sitting in like orbiter frozen arcane you furious charge out of all that madness you're going to get yourself to safety furious charge is a big part of the survivability of this build don't just sit there 100 percent of the time and whirlwind around in a little circle like you would with a normal whirlwind build you want to always be moving around making sure that each monster has the double ren stacks applied to them now another thing when you're entering a big room and it's just really really dense try to focus out the big monsters first make sure that you get your ren stacks applied to them so that way you know if you have to drag them along hopefully it'll be a little bit less of time always spend fury when on the move you want to make sure that you're keeping your tagook stacked you want to make sure that you're keeping your wrath of the berserker buff in motion so that way it's going to reduce the cooldown faster through the use of your ik set always be f be sure to have fury before moving those two kind of just go hand in hand always be sure to f spend fury when on the move that means therefore you need to make sure that you have fury before you start moving you don't want to get caught without wrath the berserker up you could rip definitely you always want to make sure that you keep your focus and restraint stacked now the thing about focus and restraint and rend is rend is going to snapshot a few different items and i actually pulled it up here i can't i can share it with you i can just edit it into the video but basically this is from nubtro this guy is really really awesome so rend where is it rend is going to snapshot strong arm bracers falter berserker's rage brawler hex and pants of mr yang rend is going to update dynamically which means it's going to alter when your damage alters because you lost one of these particular buffs let's say your wrath of berserker insanity drops well your rend is going to be dropping the damage from your wrath of berserker insanity it's also going to be dropping the bonus from the six piece ik so this means you can't apply a bunch of ren stacks and let your wrath of berserker drop the damage buff is not going to still be active you need to make sure you have to have your wrath of berserker buff for that to still be active unlike things like strong arms if you rend or if you charge through mobs and you rend them 
those mobs are going to have the strong arm buffer or buff debuff applied to them the entire time when that rend is applied that you apply it. So you furious charge through them, they have the strong arm buff, you throw the rend out, that strong arm buff is going to be active the entire time. Uh, focus and restraint is going to update dy dynamically. Bane of the Trapped, Bane of the Stricken, Convention of Elements. Thank you, Nubtro. You know, I go out looking for Google and I find a bunch of posts from Nubtro. All right, what else do we got? Rend will disappear about two screens away. This is something to know. The further that you move ahead, if you get about two screens away from the monsters, the Rend stacks are going to be dropping. This doesn't mean that sometimes you don't want to get two screens away from the monsters, but just know that when you do, the Rend is going to be dropping on those monsters. Uh, good maps, good mob types, we talked about that. A big part of this build is dragging monsters. You can't just stay in one area and kill everything there and then move to the next area. You have to drag monsters with you. You want to be dragging elites with you. You just want to be dragging hordes and hordes of monsters. That's why the cave maps, one of the reasons why the cave maps are so bad, other than just like low density, is you can't drag monsters through those tight little hallways. So you're looking for the spires. You're looking for, you know, the act one map with all the little spider dudes and everything. Something, I can't remember the name and snapshotting i did not talk about snapshotting another big part of this build and the reason that we chose the gems that we chose which was of course again going to be taeguk bane of the stricken and pain enhancer now taeguk is just for damage and for survivability it's kind of a gem all on its own but the pain enhancer and the bane of the stricken work in tandem together now how they work together is your Bane of the Stricken, I'm going to try to, I guess, describe this as best that I can, but your Bane of the Stricken has a snapshotting mechanic that it checks the attack speed that you are at when you click on, like, shield pylons, when you click on the next floor, so when you transition from floor one of a greater rift to floor two of a greater rift, it is going to snapshot your attack speed. The faster that your attack speed is, it's going to allow you to stack your Bane of the Stricken faster. So if you have really slow attack speed, Bane of the Stricken is going to attack slow. But if you have really fast attack speed, Bane of the Stricken is going to attack fast. Or it's going to stack up fast, I should say. Now we're using a really slow weapon, but we're using Pain Enhancer, which critical hits are going to cause the enemies to bleed for 3,600% weapon damage as physical over 3 seconds. The secondary on it, though, is going to be Gain Blood Frenzy, granting you 3% increased attack speed for each ble bleeding enemy within 20 yards. So what this means is you get as many monsters around you that you possibly can, and you get them bleeding through Furious Charge, through Whirlwind, through your Rend, just anything. You're just dumpstering on the monsters. And when they're hitting you back, you hit your Potion button. For whatever reason, your Potion button makes a new snapshot the same way it does if you are transitioning from Greater Rift Floor Level 1 to Greater Rift Floor Level 2. So you hit your Potion button, and now all of a sudden you're going to be stacking your Bane of the Stricken faster because you just gave yourself a new snapshot. And so instead of attacking your Bane of the Stricken attacking at a 1.2 or stacking, I keep saying stacking at a 1.21 attacks per second Bane of the Stricken, we'll say that your attack speed is now a 2.21 because of the Pain Enhancer and you hitting the Potion button. And now you're able to get, you know, maybe twice as many stacks of your Bane of the Stricken. I don't know exactly how it works. And if you doubling your attack speed gives you twice as many of the Bane of the Stricken stacks, but just know you want a ton of attack speed, as much as you can possibly get. And then use that potion button and it's going to give you more stacks for your Bane of the Stricken. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So I think that's it for the build. Uh, sorry it took so long for me to come out with this video. Uh, it just kind of happened. But it is out there, and uh, we're looking forward to getting the new patch, Season 5. Looking like it's going to be a while. It's not quite just right around the corner, but look toward forward to the future. And I'm sure we'll get a date here in not too long. So I'm Chromon Rust for Core Expert Gaming. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Like, subscribe if you would. I'm out of here, and you all have a great day.